What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Life Journey Podcast. This is your host, Quentin Goss. Um, we're, it's a season three once again, y'all. Thank you for tuning in. We're here in Atlanta, Georgia, and we got a special guest on today. We have Marcan Singletary. Marcan has uh, been working at Victory Church for eight years. Um, he's a husband and uh, has hus- he's a husband and he has a wife and kid, and um, he lives down here in Atlanta, Georgia. Marcan, thank you so much for being with us today. Like yeah. the, the Life Journey Podcast, man. Yeah, like, thank you for having me. Bro. No problem, bro. Yeah, we've been talking. Marcan, funny thing is, Marcan met my cousin Daquan, who did uh, he painted these shoes, which I'm gonna show you now. And yo, know, he did a great job for the church. And I guess they met, and then um, I ended up running into Marcan at Victory Midtown Church. And we just had breakfast, and then just went from there. So this is a great Good brother right here. Um, um, so we're gonna dive into his life journey. Yeah, man. And so. Talk about like growing up and your childhood. Just okay. Growing up here in Georgia. Okay, so I'm from Eastman, Georgia. Okay. Small town. Literally, everyone knows everyone. Like, I can see you drive by and be like, yo, there, there's the Quentin right there. Like, it's super, super small. <laughs> but uh, I moved here to Atlanta eight years ago uh, with my with my father, my father and my stepmother, Mary, and I moved up here with them. Right. And actually, our senior pastor was our neighbor. So he's the one who invited me to Victory Church. I uh, started going to Fusion there. I started going, I joined a small group. Okay. I got baptized there. And I got, a, got I became part of the staff mm-hmm. and I just kind of been there ever since. But this, my childhood, man, it was growing up, I was more introverted. I was more quiet. Uh, I was really searching for my identity. Uh, my dad actually worked a lot mm-hmm. um, growing up, so I didn't really spend too much time with him, and my, my mom did as well. So I spent a lot of my childhood days with my grandmother. Shout out to Granny. Uh, I love my Granny, man. Um, but yeah, for the most part, man. And so you could say, like, I have an old soul. I love, like, Marvin Gaye, the Temptations. Okay. I love the OJs. Like, I love, you know, that, that era of music. Right. But. You know, just spend a lot of time in the in the country, man, with my with my grandmother, with my cousins, um, for the most part. That's that's kind of it. That's awesome, man. You know, that's a great that's a great story. I mean, well, I guess growing up through like elementary school, through high school, what was that experience like? What was that whole time like? Because you know, that's a uh, interesting time in a lot of like young men, young women's lives is that portion like from yeah just before you get to college so what was that experience what yeah it was it was quite interesting you know when i think back to me in middle school me being shy being introverted me uh just kind of searching for for who who i was my identity in a sense like i found myself trying to be like what i saw so for me my role models influence were, were my cousins that are eight years older than me. So I'm trying to you know, be like them and do what, what they did. So in a sense, I grew up fast. Mm. Um, I find myself like getting into drugs at 14, um, smoking weed and popping pills and, and, and trying to do things like that to in a sense fit in and be cool right. versus just having an understanding of like, hey, you know, I'm developing, I'm growing as a young man. I don't have to necessarily do what this person is doing to try to be cool right but i didn't know that at the time i was trying i was trying hard to fit in so i that carried over all the way into high school once i hit high school i had made up in my mind like hey this is who i'm gonna be um but it was very like arrogant it was cocky i was trying to like prove that i'm somebody and i want somebody to see me at the end of the day um but it wasn't until literally like a couple of years ago where I just like, hey, I don't, I feel like I'm faking. This isn't. Faking? What do you mean? Like, I feel like I'm just trying to like create this persona of, of how I want people to perceive me versus mm-hmm. just being who God has called me to be and me being genuinely okay with that. Mm-hmm. Like, it's okay that, you know, I don't do what you do or like what you like. I have my own personality, I have my own gifts, I have my own talents. Right. But for so for so long, I always saw others, people's things as better than mine. Right. But that's not true. So. No, that's you know, that's you know, it's interesting you say that. Um, let me actually pull up this quote. It's from a book called "The Rules of Engagement" by Sydney Trim. Oh, was it Trim? Trimming? Yeah. 
and it's interesting you just said that so let me let me pull it up real quick while we're here on the podcast because a lot that that's in the social media and all these different like platforms and stuff now I, I make you feel like i'm not there yet or i need to be at this specific point or i need to do this or that yeah. you don't have to like you uh, worry about your journey you know and uh let me see here you talked about seeking approval so people who engage in approval seeking and this is like it's me it's been me before like all of us like uh, approval seeking activities for people who um, do anything to get affirmation acceptance from others approval seeking individuals lack pow- personal power self-worth dignity and a sense of significance approval approval seeking activities are driven by fear and it goes on it, it's about it's a lot of stuff like it just really talks about like it's like a specific spirit on us this is like constantly wanting uh, like that dopamine level goes up yeah. you know everybody talks about the dopamine you know yeah. that dopamine level goes up within ourselves like we, it's like a high yeah. and um, of like getting that pat on the back, yeah. Yeah. getting those likes, right. Right. you know? So nah, it's, it's great that you said like you, you noticed that early yeah. and a lot of people like, it may take them longer to a couple years to notice that. Yeah. And you notice, you, you said, nah, let me shut that down. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's interesting you talk about like a high because you know, coming out of high school, doing drugs, popping ecstasy and pain pills and smoking weeds, like high, I was high a lot. But what I really was doing was using these drugs, sex, money, all of these things to try to fill a void Mm -hmm. that I didn't know that I had. So it's like, in my mind, I'm like trying to fill a bucket that has holes in it. Mm -hmm. Like, I can keep putting these things in, I can keep smoking, I can keep going to the clubs, I can keep doing the things to try to build this, have this persona or feel this void of self-worth or affirm- wanting that affirmation or right. approval, but ultimately it's not going to fulfill me. It's not gonna sustain me. And it wasn't until like I had that realization, like, hey, these things aren't going to feel that hurt or that, yeah. that void that you have. And that's when I began to go on a different journey. Mm-hmm. So That's real talk right there. Yeah, man. I mean, those that are listening right now, like really tune into that and really hone in on that. Cause that's a problem in society today we let's say social media these i mean in our phones too just like being on here like texting and um computer constantly looking for that and um you gotta you gotta learn how to defeat it and it's harder like i think especially with young kids like they're super these kids are smart yeah. they <laughs> these kids are know how to work phones lap tablets and everything better than a lot of the older generation um but they're getting addicted and it's bad. It's getting super addicted to it. And I seen one of my cousins. He, he used to just cry because he couldn't play Fortnite. He used to like throw stuff. And I'm like, this is not healthy. Right. You know what happened? Let's ride. You know, I know I sound like an old head. <laughs> Let's ride some bikes for real. Let's like take a walk, go to the park. You really, I really don't see. I don't see kids at the park as much no more, like I used to. Like, yeah. So now nah, that's 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 true. That's the real talk um, about the affirmation. I mean, approval stuff. Uh, I guess like what was that experience like that transition from high school to college or you know from beyond that? Um, I actually chose not to go to college, man. Um, I'm at a place right now where I am thinking about it again. Okay. Um, thinking about going to school for business administration. Okay. But I chose not to go to school right at, right after high school because I was immature, man. I would have gone for the wrong reasons. I would have gone just to party more yeah, and, and yeah I mean, I was, yeah it wouldn't have been good so i actually chose not to go and i'm, I'm actually glad that i did uh, because i'm glad that i didn't go excuse me because now i have a different motivation mm-hmm. i have a different driver like having my son um who is now one like he was interesting story so a couple of days ago like he was following me around the house and um, I was in my room in the office or whatever and I was listening to music and I got my hands up from having fun mm-hmm. and I saw him like trying to do what I was doing mm-hmm. and I was like oh my god like my son is about to be influenced by everything that he sees me do mm-hmm. so it's like what am I modeling before him so he's gonna like pick up my he's gonna see my character flaws you know, my attitude, my work ethic, he's gonna see and be influenced by all of those things. And it's like, what do I wanna model before him? So now I'm at this place of like, hey, I don't wanna, I don't wanna force him to go to college, but I do wanna model a standard right. before him and give him that, that, that opportunity to choose. Um, so now, man, I have a, different, I have a different drive. I have a different motivation and, I, and 
I'm glad that it worked out the way that it did. Yeah, that's a blessing. I mean, yeah. and I, I loved hearing, uh, I don't know if you, I, I watch a lot of Gary Vee. You know, you love Gary Okay, yeah. yeah. So he and he's he the dude curses a lot, which is but it's just funny. Like when we had like a family, uh, a, a husband and wife on, and it was like a little baby, and he just kept cursing like a sailor. And it was just <laughs> like it doesn't like it, that's how he is. But I like how he stay, he's he stays how he is. That's he says his true identity. And I said I respect that. I can respect someone that does that. But he he talked about um, college and how you shouldn't. He's like you should, people shouldn't go to college. And I'm like, you know what? That's interesting. I think like college at this point is yeah. Like if you're going for business or something, administrative or in the internship opportunity is cool. But you still have to like gain experience. Mm -hmm. Going, you know, going to work for a business or um, I feel like college has been more of just like yeah, meeting people. Mm -hmm. That's literally what it has felt like. I've got my degree, but I'm not even doing my degree right now. Wow. I'm, wow. <laughs> I'm I, my degree was like journalism, sports. I'm doing. I'm in marketing did could have if i would have knew this i probably would have did marketing stuff but i didn't know so um there's entrepreneurs that haven't i think like i don't it might be i don't know ty lopez i don't know if ty lopez was it went to college or not but there's some people that haven't gone to college that are like making millions yeah. it's not about the money but it's just like it's all about this like yeah. what are you doing with your brand what are you doing with your your knowledge are you learning are you applying are you making change in people's lives and people that go do not like work for nonprofits? um around the world like it's whatever you're doing with your time in your life um that old school standard um uh, i feel like it's being broken now like in today's society like, of like oh you got to go to college you got to do this and that and i was like either entrepreneurship real estate's huge like there's so much so i think that you know like that's it's great to hear that and like i know uh, there's a lot of people watching that like want to know like dang like yeah like should i go or shouldn't i go yeah. you know so yeah, no, appreciate like being and, I, and I think like you say that 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 season is that wave is kind of shifted where you got to go to college, get a good get a good job versus now. I mean, what about what about using the gifts that you have? I mean, for those that are artists yes. that can just naturally draw and turn that into a business that right. can be very profitable. But like the question that I've been asking myself and, you know, the conversation that we've been having um, just in my peer group is like who who defines success right. like what does success look like for you because for me it doesn't necessarily have to be millions and millions of dollars you know it could be being home and spending quality time with my son and my right. wife and like and I make 50k is that okay you know what I mean who, it depends who determines that right. so like I'm glad that we're at a point to where things are starting to change to where it's like, you're not successful unless you have a Mercedes, you have the Rolex, you have the mansion, you have the six figure income. Yeah, what about the the the, the wife and the husband that are happy, happy, that have a strong marriage, that are have successful kids? Like, what, what about that? We don't celebrate that because that's not, that's not sexy for Instagram. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like we, we do it, we're modeling our lives Mm. Gems. He dropping gems right now. That's that's true. That's true. They, there's people legit out here living their life for social media that won't like. Exam. I just give an example. Like, there's some people that like. Oh, you didn't like that. Like, you will talk to them. You didn't, but you didn't like my page. Like, you'll talk to them on the phone every day. Yeah. Um, best friend, whatever. Like, you'll talk to them on the phone every single day. Um, hey, you didn't like my post. You didn't like my story. Or you're sharing that. Like, is, is, are we in real reality? Or is it social media more important than, I don't know, what do you think about that? Like when people get to a point where they're like putting that above, if it's a relationship or if it's a friendship or if it's like just in life in general, like you, the, the check mark, the light, like what people are putting that above, like just reality. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a great question though um, but for me you know I'm not huge on social media just because like I'm not trying to get caught up in like the likes and the the, the check marks and stuff like that I don't want to because here's at the end of the day whether you have a check mark or behind your name or you you don't you're still valuable and I don't want to allow I don't think that we should allow that blue check mark or the lack of the check mark <laughs> to take away from what that person brings to the table. So I don't want to treat you any differently than I would treat this person and just have that standard of like, God has called me to love you and you. Exactly. And I'm not going to like 
treat one better than the other. But like, you know, if I'm if I'm on social media and, and my friend is that I support, that I love, that I want to see them succeed is doing so, I'm going to come behind that. I'm going to support that. I'm going to promote that. But like, I'm, but I'm at the same time, I'm not going to hate or 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 judge anyone who's trying to do you know their hustle or their grind or whatever i support go for it bro right. do your do your thing and i'm going and i'm going to be okay and confident in doing my thing i think right. what happens is we tend to it's like running a race like how can i run my race if i'm trying to look over and see what you're doing that's so true that's so true that's can, real that's real talk right yeah, now no. talk more about that yeah that's, like for me real, like man. so it kind of goes back to have for me, not having a degree and seeing those who do have a degree. Right. I support those and I'm, I'm excited and, and proud of you who have that. But for me, I'm not, it doesn't take away from who I am as an individual because I don't have that. Right. Like, this is my lane. This is the season that I'm in and I'm okay with that. So I don't want to allow society to put an external pressure on me to say that to be successful by 30, you gotta have these things. Mm. How can you, your, your story is not my story. And I have to know that and I have to walk and be confident in that. God is taking me somewhere. God is taking you somewhere. God is taking us somewhere. And our journeys may not look the same. That's real talk. That's real talk right there. Like a lot of people look, like you said, look over someone else's shoulder and see what they're doing. And, and they may be on their journey already and then they want to switch it up or they want to move to another different, you know, different type of, uh, I don't know, job or if it's in a job, you know, it happens all the time. And even for me, like I'm in mark, I'm in the marketing. So like I got to look at social media all the time and like it's the, the goal is to be on there to do just be on there for business and keep scrolling through and like make sure you got everything checked off or send the DMs you need to and then get out of there. And um, yeah, sometimes you're scrolling through and you see like, oh, I just opened up a warehouse or I just ended up making this amount. And it's like, okay. That's awesome. I'm, you know, God bless you, man. Like this comment, like I'll, I'll come and say, you know, God, because like to like the the thought, it always comes. I mean, everybody's tempted or like, you know, it comes in our mind like, why? Right, you know, you got that. They got that. So yeah. like, and you're like, you know what? No, stop. <laughs> yeah. Erase. Delete. No, like it doesn't matter. Like it, I'm, I'm happy for them. Yeah. I'm happy for them. Like that's the blessing. They've worked hard for that. Mm -hmm. Stop. Whatever thought is in my for real and like a lot of people don't they allow that to like ugh, like and <laughs> entice them just like oh man just like what you're not there yet so what that voice talks in the back of your head yeah. so like what do you think about that like how to defeat that it's exactly what you just said you gotta take that like and and control that like mm -hmm. obviously there's gonna be thoughts there's gonna be moments we're human we see things we want things we desire things but i'm not gonna take away from celebrating you and what you've accomplished because you work for it and that's why I'm not big on social media because I'm working on what what is in front of me. So I, I can look over and see you and you doing your things and congratulate you. Yes. But now it's time for me to get back to work. Mm -hmm. You could I can use that as motivation, not like I'm trying to take away from what you've accomplished or, or even what you're working towards, mm -hmm. because like at the end of the day, we're all on a journey. You're just further. Either we're further along or behind. As long as we're moving forward, man, it's all that matters to me. So I, I try not to get caught up in that. That's real talk. I love it. I love it. So at, at this point, so we're moving to the next question. At this point, like, you know, you, you, you've been working at Victory mm -hmm. um, in that whole experience. Like, you're now you're an uh, operations manager mm -hmm. at Victory. And that role, like, and tell us a little bit about that role and how you've embraced that and um, how you've been just, yeah, making an impact at the church. You know? Man, the the it's it's a journey, uh, for sure. I'm I'm learning a lot. Uh, it's, it's challenging me in different ways um, because there's a lot of things that go into you know what what we do at the church. Uh, I, it's a similar kind of principle I learned from our, our founding pastor, Pastor Dennis, um, that people are affected by every decision we make and don't make. So how I steward what I've been entrusted with is going to impact someone. So I take it very serious, but at the same time, man, I want to just be the best me that I can be in this, in this time and on this journey. But it's, it's, it's great, man. We're doing a lot of great things at the church. I'm very excited to see um, where, what's next for us. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, I just want to 
kind of what we we're just talking about. I want to stay in my lane, man, <laughs> and I want to just yeah. see this, see what God has given me grow right. and, and move forward. That's real talk, man. And like, by the way, if y'all don't know what Victory Church is, um, they have we got to have three or four campuses. We have three. three campuses, and I mean, huge church down here in Atlanta. And like, I just think it's amazing, like the things that they've done. And it's it's cool seeing like um, churches that start off, you know, as one location and then they start to expand off, because yeah. it shows that like you know they're actually trying to make impact in the community. And um, I think like an example, I, I watch a lot of Mike Todd, you know, and watching his stuff and it's legit seeing like where they came from, and, and then like seeing his other stories like that too. Like just like you write you write down your like legit writing down what you want to accomplish, and you letting God just being crazy enough to let it happen, and it actually happening, like. I don't know, and then seeing other ministries do the same thing, it's just a blessing. Like, God really works in your life, and he's there. He's always been there, and he's never going anywhere. He never changes. And that, and they were talking about that, too. Like, just, he never changes. Yeah. So, like, most people are like, oh, well, he blessed me in this season, but, man, this season is not even, It's like, he never changes, but, like, where is your heart at? You know, all of us. It's all of us. Like, where's your heart at? Where's your, you know? So it's, it's, just, it's just funny how, um, you know, not funny, but um, I guess what I'm trying to get back to is like within a church, like it's great to see um, progress be made with people with great hearts, even and that they're vulnerable and open to talk about it, like about their mistakes, yeah. about what they've done um, and be real. Because as, as the more transparent you are and open, like there's nothing to, nobody can say anything. The, evil can't come upon you know what i'm saying because you're open with your you're real with yourself yeah. so like I, I love i love that about like the, i guess the new generation the pastors now mm -hmm. are just so much more like yeah what's up <laughs> you know, and, and we have struggles they all they may not be the same but it's better for me to it's better for me to in my opinion to bring this stuff to the forefront than it to be exposed Facts. like there we've heard of people and pastors and people in leadership positions get exposed, but they have had opportunities to share that sure. in private with people that they trust and they can get the healing that they need. And, and it goes back to the journey, man. And we're all on different stages in that, right. but it's, it's just be real and put it out there. It's, it's you're, you feel lighter. You feel like, you know, what's he going to say? What's he going to think? Hey man, at the end of the day, like, I told the people that I trust, my leadership, they're aware of these things and I'm moving, I've taken steps to move forward. I'm showing progress. Can't, can't be mad at that. Right, as long as you're open. I remember I, I was super open. I don't know why I did it, but I, I talked to like a youth, like teenagers and stuff at a specific, at a conference um, in, my, in my hometown. Just open about like where my faults were early on and where I've come. Yeah. Even through playing in the NFL, f having fiance, all that stuff, and where that, why, why we broke up, like all this different stuff. I was open, I was vulnerable, and like being like that, you feel, you feel good. You feel like you feel it's nothing to like. You're just open about it, like you're, nothing to hide, like, and you're helping somebody else. And the amount of like messages I received after that is like, thank you for sharing that. Nobody really likes to share stuff like that, like just being vulnerable for us. So that's been the word of 2021. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, man. So what would you say? Actually, let me ask you this. What's your favorite hometown restaurant? My favorite hometown restaurant is my grandma's house. So I say that because, <laughs> well, there's that. But then also you got to remember, I'm from a small town. Like there okay. isn't, no. <laughs> there, there really isn't many restaurants. I like it's, it's crazy. So yeah, now my grandma's house, man. I love my grandma's cooking. I love you know the atmosphere the energy that you're gonna that you're gonna receive grandma's house all day all right so everyone uh, what, what's the favorite plate though uh breakfast man anything oh, that comes out in the morning time grits. is my favorite oh grits, grits eggs bacon boy Ooh. some pink lemonade, Ooh. Pink lemonade. yeah boy. Nah, yeah for real. so make sure y'all i mean y'all can't it's not a restaurant but at least y'all can maybe do an online order or something for you i'm being still i'm being still yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But um, what's a what's a quote you can leave everybody with that they can be impact? Oh, actually, no. Let me ask you this before we get to the end, towards the end. Um, and everybody already knows what I'm about to ask. So, how can everyone get to that point where you're at right now? I know you're still on your journey. Um, someone who's interested in ministry and wanting to just dive in, 
um, and don't know where to start. Um, I know, you know, what what do they have to do? How do they get to where you are, or how do they? Yeah, they're, they're, they're inspired, inspired by you right now, right now. and um, they reach to that pinnacle. I would say to first be mindful of your know your why. Like, why do you do what you do? Why do you want this? Because for, for me being in ministry and being in it eight years, there's a lot of things that happen behind the scene that you really have to know why you're doing this. Right. You know, this isn't for a paycheck. This isn't for um, trying to get close to certain people. Like, right. you know, there's early mornings, there's late nights, and there's like, hey, it sounds cliche, but like, to God be the glory. Like, mm -hmm. if that's not your true why, you're not gonna make it because there's things that happen that you're gonna disagree with. Mm -hmm. And this is where you have to be open. And like, um, you, I would just say really be open, man, because things are changing, things are evolving. We're trying things, we're, we're experimenting, we're, we're trying to be intentional about where we're, where we're going. And, and that requires change. Like our church is one of the largest if not the largest multicultural church in America. We have a, over 145 different nationalities. Mm -hmm. it requires you to change, man. You can't, the way that we, what we did in 2000 is not what we can do in 2021. Right. So we're, and, and how you adjust and adapt to that change will determine if you make it. Right. So I would encourage you, know your why, be open and give it your all. Mm -hmm. And like, there's a lot of, times where we would hold our gifts or hold back a piece of our personality to try to fit into this circle or or uh to for, for whatever the reason may be but i mean you got to use everything that god has given you your perspective your personality your attitude your your hands what you can create all and we're just going to go all in if you can do if you can be know your why be open and be all in you'll be amazed to see where you go. And that's, and that's similar to me. Like I had to grow even to this point of being really open and vulnerable and, 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 and willing to put myself out there again because I've been hurt. Church hurt. I mean, just be real, like it happens. And, and how I deal with that church hurt is going to determine how I move forward. So, yeah. man, I would just be open, man. Be open. open and give it your all. They know your why. And you'll be amazed to see where you go. Mm. Real talk. Real yeah, talk. Man. Last thing. Leave them with a quote that they can stick with, that they can still stick with them for the rest of their lives. <sighs> On the spot. <laughs> no, that's good. I, I'm going back. I'm going back to. I'm going back to what I learned from Pastor Dennis. People's lives are affected by every decision you make and don't make. We're only sitting here now because of a decision that our pastors made 30 years ago. Had there not been a victory, there wouldn't be this. Maybe I'll Thank you for listening to the Life Journey Podcast with Quentin Gauz. To find out more and to follow the journey, visit Quentin's Instagram at QGauz or our business page at iron underscore visuals. For full recaps of this show, find us on iTunes and the Google Play Store. Thank you for tuning in.